Welcome to Literary and Jury Charge Practice. Let's get started with a jury charge. Ready? You must determine whether the witnesses for each side are credible. If you find that they are credible or not credible, then you must not count on their testimonies. In doing so, you must keep in mind that there has been testimony stricken from the record. That testimony is not to be considered in your decision. You must not include this testimony when you are making your decision as to the facts in this case. Even if you believe this evidence to be credible evidence, you must act as if you had not heard it. If you have a question with regard to the law, as I indicated, you are to get the bailiff to take the question or questions to me. I will answer your questions as best I can. I will be in my chambers, so I will be here to answer any questions that you may have. You must, however, rely on your own convictions in determining the evidence. There is more than one party involved in the crime. The parties are being tried together. If you find that one is guilty, then you must also find that the others are guilty. They are all principles with regard to the matter. As such, the words plaintiff and defendant apply to each plaintiff and to each defendant except as you may be instructed. With regard to the parties, you must keep in mind that there are two actions that are being tried. Whenever reference is made in these instructions, to plaintiff or defendant, such reference, reference relates to each party in that capacity. You must keep in mind that the damages is significant. The law that applies in this case determines how to rule in this matter. These individuals have been accused of causing the damage. Your concern is not to speculate with regard to others who are not here. Your concern is to determine whether these individuals acted in a way to cause the plaintiff harm. Whether others were involved is not for you to decide. It is not for you to speculate whether there was anyone else who was at fault. The defendant's attorney has brought that up in trial. That is not important to this case. It is an issue that is meant to confuse you. It is true that others were involved in the accident, but to a lesser amount. However, that is not important to this case. The evidence brought forth regarding this has been stricken from the record. This case is about the evidence and witnesses who are here today. You must determine the result based upon the credibility of this evidence. As I indicated, these persons have only been accused of causing the damage. You have heard the testimony of the witnesses 
who have testified for both sides. It is now your opportunity to decide whether the plaintiff's attorney proved her case. You have heard the testimony of not only these individuals, but of all the others who had evidence to present to the court. After hearing the evidence, it is up to you to decide how to vote. If you have any doubt as to the meaning of the law that I have presented to you today, as you try to reach your decision, you may ask the bailiff to deliver the questions that you may have to my chambers. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this portion of the trial is when I explain to you your duties. It is your duty to follow the law. You must follow the law, but you must also decide all questions of fact. You must determine from what you have observed whether the credibility lies on the side of the plaintiff or the defendant. You must decide all questions of fact in this case from the evidence received in this trial and not from any other source. You must not go out on your own seeking evidence. You must determine whether the evidence presented at trial and the witnesses corroborate the plaintiff's side. Keep in mind that whenever reference is made in these instructions to plaintiff or defendant, such reference relates to each party in that capacity. The order in which the instructions are given has no significance as to their relative importance. Statements of counsel are not evidence. They must not be treated as such. The only thing that is important is the credibility of the witnesses and the evidence that corroborates their stories. Was a nice, nice warm up, huh? All right, let's do some literary practice now. And this this article is called "Oh, the Places We Go." And this is, this is by somebody by the name of Lisa Richardson. This article is in the Journal of Court Reporting. And she is a captioner. Captioner and she provides cart as well. And it says here, I've captioned and carted a lot of events in my time, graduations, funerals, a wedding, meetings, a bar conversation, and many different classes, just to name a few. But never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I'd be captioning a rodeo. I mean, really, a rodeo? So here we go. How did this happen? Well, I have a client, we'll call him RT, who loves the rodeo and because of his hearing loss, going to see his friends participate was really frustrating for him, as I'm sure you can imagine. There's so much going on 
and he can't hear a darn thing. I'll admit, though, when he first asked me if I'd do it, I was less than excited. I'm just not the biggest rodeo fan. I had never been to a rodeo in my life. Plus, what about all the dirt and dust? Where will I sit? How will RT be able to read the computer screen? Will it be too bright outside? How will I hear? Controlled audio is one thing, but sitting outside listening to a general public address system with lots of folks in the audience? Yikes. Luckily, RT put me in touch with a good friend of his, SG, who is very involved with this particular rodeo organization, and after a few conversations, we had a tentative plan in place that he felt would work, keeping me and my equipment as protected as possible. Okay, we've got a plan, so my anxiety started to subside. Wait, what would I wear? Deciding on appropriate attire for some of these cart captioning jobs can be really challenging. You always want to fit in with the group, but it can be a real guessing game with some assignments. Like the time I showed up for a retreat in a business suit and everyone else was in sweats. So we'll get back to that literary, see how, see how that works for her. Let's do some more jury charge practice. Ready? If you have a question with regard to the law, as I indicated, you are to get the bailiff to take the question or questions to me. I will answer your questions as best as I can. I will be in my chambers, so I will be here to answer any questions that you may have. This case involves a business entity. With regard to business entities, you must know the law. The fact that this case involves a business entity should not prejudice you in your deliberations or in your verdict. You must treat the business entity as a person in the eyes of the law. A business entity is a person. That entity is entitled to the same fair and impartial considerations and to justice by the same legal standards. With regard to the business entity, you must keep in mind that it has been charged with a serious crime and must be treated as such. You must keep in mind that the crime it is charged with committing is a serious crime. The law that applies in this case determines the seriousness of the crime. You must consider the law when making your decision. You must not be prejudiced in any way because the crime involves a company. On the other hand, 
you must not punish a company because you think it has power above an individual. The company and a few of its leaders have been charged with the crime. All have been charged as committing the crime as principals. It is now the duty of the district attorney to have convinced you that they all acted in this capacity. These individuals may not have acted alone. They may have had assistance from others who helped. That is not your concern. Your concern is not to speculate whether these individuals acted in the capacity of principals in committing this crime. You must find whether the company should have been responsible for the acts committed by these individuals, whether they had help from other individuals who assisted in the planning of the crime is not important. In other words, whether they have had an accessory before the fact or after the fact is not important. What is important is determining whether these individuals acted on behalf of the company in committing the crime as charged. You must make that determination. It is not for you to speculate whether there were others involved when the crime was committed. It is true that others may have participated in the commission of the crime, but they are not on trial today. It is not your responsibility to speculate into these matters. The evidence brought forth regarding others helping the principals plan the crime is not important in this case. This case is about the principals who are accused of committing the crime. As I indicated, these persons have only been charged with committing the crime and are not determined to have committed the crime until you make your decision in that regard. Let's get back to our rodeo. Ready? <clears throat> anyway, I mentioned my dilemma to my neighbor and she had the perfect answer. Jeans and cowboy boots. Okay, I could have figured out the jeans, but I didn't have any cowboy boots. Why would I have cowboy boots? I'm a city girl. My neighbor, being the dream she is, had cowboy boots, and they fit. Okay, this is all coming together. And I knew R.T. would love seeing the boots. The day finally came and I made my way to the rodeo. It had been very hot the week before, so along with being nervous about the setup and what I was in for, I was also worried about the heat and hoped for a break from the hot sun, not only for me, but for my equipment. I met up with RT along with SG and another gentleman, JG, 
who told me he was there to take care of me for the day. Wow, I wish I could have one of those at every job. And take care of me, they did. They'd arranged to have a canopy set up right by the arena railing so I could see and hear. And I would also be protected from the sun. Then they ran a long power cord to me so I had electricity to run both computers all afternoon. And to top it all off, they had a fan just for me. I felt like a real diva, a rodeo diva. Okay, I thought, bring it on. I'm ready. For the setup, I had a separate computer for RT so he could sit wherever he wanted. I ended up using a program that allowed me to really manipulate the screen colors and font size to allow for the best screen visibility even in the sun. He was even able to sit in the bleachers until he realized I had a better seat and it was shaded. Sounds like a nice setup. All right, that will conclude our jury charge and literary practice. Thank you.